This is Alan Farley from FX Empire. Please subscribe to the FX Empire YouTube channel. Let's talk about comparison indicators. The comparison indicator is a technical tool that analyzes relationships between two or more securities, indices, and markets. Now, in addition to comparison, uh, comparison indicators also cover correlation. Correlation is a very important market term referring to how securities move in relation to each other. Now, there's even a broader definition. It also refers to when or, or how an indicator moves in relationship to a security. But we're going to focus on security to security type of analysis as we look at these four comparison indicators. First up will be just the plot function on the advanced charting program at uh, the FX Empire site. Now, if you take a look down here, you'll see this little um, this little check mark called compare. You would compare and you could take anything you want here, but I like taking SP500. And what will happen is the SP500 plot will be drawn in relationship to the Apple chart. Now, the one thing it does right here is it changes these numbers on the side from uh, the value of, say, Apple and the value of the SP500. And they're we have very different prices and refers to them in terms of percentage change. And now percentage change is apples to apples. In other words, it doesn't matter what the underlying price of the security or the index is. If you're looking at percentage change, we could see that um, Apple has risen 25% uh, during the course of this uh, analysis, which starts back here, wherever the price chart starts. And uh, the SP 500 has risen 29%. Now, the thing to look at for uh, these plot type functions is these crossovers. You see these crossovers here? This is where one security starts to outperform another security. And this creates convergence and divergence relationships and convergence and divergence signals. So we have up here, we have Apple outperforming the SP 500. It's on top of it. Now, when it started its uh, descent and uh, its, uh, its percentage growth was dropping, it crossed over the uh, SP 500 uh, uh, plot, uh, indicating that it was now underperforming uh, the SP 500. And as you can notice, going all the way into uh, the middle of April, at least going back to last September and October, uh, Apple is still underperforming the SP 500. So it's a very interesting indicator. Now, uh, you need to leave this plot up for the next two indicators because it works in conjunction with them. The first one being the correlation coefficient. Let me see if I can do this right the first time. Correlation, cor correlation, correlation coefficient, pulling up through the studies. And as you can see, the correlation coefficient goes and plots, uh, plots a line of uh, the same uh, security that we have up here. That's the SP500, and it's plotting it uh, in a different manner. Now, if you look on the right side of the correlation coefficient, you'll see that the numbers go from 0 up to 1. It actually goes down to a minus 0, but it, uh, we didn't get very far into the minuses during this period of time. Now, simply stated, uh, when a uh, when a two securities are correlated at 1.0, that's considered a perfect correlation, which means if one security rises by 1%, the other security should rise by 1%. And if one security drops by 1%, the other security should drop by 1%. Now, down here at the other extreme is negative 1. Now, this is perfectly negative correlation. Now, now, it's not exactly what you think. It's not that there isn't any correlation. It's that the correlation is completely opposed. In other words, if uh, Apple rises 1%, if it's negatively correlated to the SP500, the SP500 has to drop 1%. And so that's called a, that's called an opposition, where it's correlated, but it goes in exactly the opposite direction, which is a very valuable concept, which you get a lot in, traditionally with gold and Bitcoin versus, say, some securities in the bond market, where uh, flights to safety produce uh, uh, rallies in certain kinds of instruments of the same type. They produce sell-offs in other types of instruments. So you can have this negative one correlation. Now, the zero point is exactly what the zero says. The zero meaning there is zero correlation between these instruments. Uh, either one can rise or fall, whatever percentage. And according to this, if it's sitting right at the zero line, there is no correlation. Now, you see, correlation also has a direction. And so we have an increase in, an increase in positive correlation, a decrease in positive correlation. Here we have an increase in negative correlation. And that's, uh, that's very important in terms of building divergence-convergence relationships. Now we're going to move on to another study that uses very, very similar uh, bits and pieces, and that's the performance index. 
except it draws it in a different way per performance. Here we go. Now, performance index requires one additional step, which I'm going to have to take a second and show you. Now, we're going to flip that back over. Oh, you're going to do this to me. Here we go. The performance index. There we go. We've got to match it. It's just one of the little crooks of using this program. We have to match the performance index to the exact to the exact uh, ticker of the uh, of the uh, plot. And in this case, even though it thinks it's looking at SP or the spy, uh, the spy doesn't really work with this analysis. So, uh, we have to use the index or underlying index in this program in order to pull up performance. And so you'll see what I mean here in a second, which is IND CBS X. Now that should work. Let's see if we did it right. Yeah, and voila, here we have the performance index. So now it's apples to apples. It's uh, it's taking the SPX, which is the cash index for the uh, SP500, correlated against the cash index of uh, uh, the cash index of the SP500, as opposed to the ETF. For some reason, uh, it doesn't make that. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't understand that you're trying to look at the same thing. So anyway, so we've we've. Uh, uh, we've created this uh, plot that ha has a, a green area to it and it has a red area to it. And it's bounded by this 1.0. You see this 1.0 right here? Now, this is this is a positive correlation performance index. That means that the, the independent variable, in this case being the SP500, is, um, is uh, excuse me, being, the, uh, being Apple, is, is outperforming the SP500. And it's a much more visual graph than the co a correlation coefficient. As, as you can see, this, this outperformance continued until Apple started to break down. And now this is underperformance compared to uh, the SP500. So what we're really looking at is that, uh, is that correlation that's very similar. You see, this is where we have the crossover on the correlation coefficient is exactly where uh, this uh, performance index switch from positive to negative. And again, you can see why, how it's, it's almost drawing the space between the index between the Apple and uh, the SP 500 through this plot. You see how similar this plot is right down here to uh, to the space underneath, and it's got this little spike. So it's a more visual way of really producing this information. And again, the plot is a little bit different in terms of of uh, it doesn't go it doesn't go between uh, say plus one and minus one. So it's drawn a little bit differently. But it's giving a visual representation, which I think many traders would rather use rather than correlation coefficient, because in a glance they could see whether Apple is outperforming or underperforming. Okay, uh, let's move on finally, because it's a very small category. We're going to move on to uh, what's called price relative indicator. Uh, it has another name. A lot of people call it the relative strength indicator. And all it is is a ratio between the two instruments being looked at. In other words, you take the closing price of the SP 500. And divided by the closing price of the uh, of Apple, it creates a ratio. And as this ratio changes, one instrument is relatively stronger than the other instrument. Now, this plot is drawn from a similar method as uh, as the others, uh, where I, I've put the uh, co co the the uh, correlation coefficient up here in this uh, in this box, so you can see how it works relative to the price relative. Uh, index. You see, as it comes down here, it's called price, price relative. We hit price relative, it pulls up a plot, we match the plot to the same plot we're using in the first, which is the uh, SPX or the SP cash index. Uh, that in turn produces this, uh, this uh, chart that has very little movement on it. As you can see, if you look at the uh, side, you can see it goes from 0, 0, 001 all the way up to 0, 035. That's a very small amount. But this ratio uh, during the course of time uh, becomes very important in terms of which uh, I instrument is outperforming uh, compared to the other instrument. As you can see, if we go back a ways with, uh, with Apple, you see it hit its two peaks in performance right when price came up to this, these, high pro uh, these high points. And then it goes into a period of underperformance relative to the SP 500 uh, during this period, which is, uh, this is a little bit different period than we were looking at before. Uh, this goes up to about uh, about uh, August of last year. 
Now, this is best used as a long-term indicator uh, because it changes direction uh, very, very quickly, but it doesn't change back very quickly. In other words, it matches peaks and valleys, but then you're going to get a very long period here where it's not giving you very uh, good information in terms of uh, which instrument is doing better than the other instrument. As you can see, the uh, Apple's doing fairly poorly during these three months, but I think that the visual capacity of the correlation coefficient is probably a, a lot more valuable for short-term traders. Now, this isn't always the case. If we look at, a, say, a different display, we probably get different information. Let's look at a one hour and see the correlation of one hour. You see, as you can see, the, the changes over time are very, very small. Let's take a look at a very long-term chart, say about, um, Let's look at a one month chart and see what the correlations look like. Yeah, look at these, these long term correlations. Now, this gives you a very interesting idea of how uh, Apple has performed relative to the SP 500. Uh, now, this is on using all the data that you see. So it's going all the way back to the beginning of the, of the chart. And if you move this back and forth, there's going to be some, some changes in, in where uh, these highs and lows appear. But as you can see, uh, Apple performed very well right up until August of 2020 and has relatively underperformed since that time.